Well, welcome back to the channel everyone. If you haven't already seen, we did another episode here at RMS Welding Systems. We're going over the automation of the pipeline industry. We did everything on the inside of the pipe as far as the internal clamp goes, as well as the PFM. Once it's all sealed up with that back weld, we still got to fill that bevel. And that's what these bugs do. So we're heading up to the RMS bug room to check out what these bugs are all about. Got a couple of them laid out right here. So I'm up here with Danny Drew with RMS. Now, Danny, what do you do for RMS? I'm an automatic welding tech for flux core. So y'all do not only pulse MIG with these, but you also do dual shield flux core with them. Correct. This bug right here, the only way it can operate on a piece of pipe is you got to get this band on first. Yep, right here where it goes together. Mm -hmm. Make sure that's on top. Okay. It's on the side. Y'all hang ups on the side. You can cheat it left to right a little bit, but not a whole lot. Same thing with the other these fit points. Yep, make all them fit points. You get a band hammer. Just hit it Where's that times. hammer at? Y'all got one in here? I don't think. Okay. That's what I carried around my pocket all the time was that band hammer on my belt. And so I could check the spacing on the yeah, bands yeah. and all that good stuff. Cause they gotta be that certain distance. So that bug can line up. Correct. Now this thing is a little different than some of the bugs I've seen. This has two weld heads on it. Do you use both heads the whole time? All but hot pass. Hot pass is one head. Okay. So the one head doesn't use on the hot pass shack, right? Yep. You yep. don't use the one head. You just use that. The welder's job isn't to set these bugs up or set the pendant up or anything like that. That's the welder's job. Just hit start, go, keep it in line. You want to keep it right in the bevels. So he's going to steer. If, it, yep. if this band isn't perfect. It's off. So if it's, if it's off, you're steering it left or right. So it's if not it's, like set and go. No, it's not set and go. If it's lined up, it'll weld pretty, pretty straight. If it's a little cut back a little bit more on the edges, you'll open up oscillation, make it wider, oscillates like that. All right, so you can really get to the toes yeah. better if, you know, if you're not seeing it right. Yep. So everything's controlled by the pendant. Yep. But the welder doesn't need to know how to program nothing. All they got to do is oscillation. Oscillation side to side, speed up, slow it down. Shack's going down on a piece of pipe. Helpers run in, drop the floors down. They grab the bug off the wall, throw it on the pipe. They get it to the top where it needs to be. What does the welder come in and do? They get it to the top. I'm looking down here, looking at the bevels, making sure this is center. So in the center, hit and cycle, then arc start, give it a second to purge the gas, then you're going. And then you're just watching it, making you're, sure you're it's where it's it, at. Yep. Sometimes you might not even have to touch that. No, huh? no. If you got it set up right, it's doing good. You ain't gotta worry about nothing. You just watch it all the way to the bottom. You hit stop. Stop. Welder just sets the pendant down and walks out. Yep. That's it. That's it. And then the helper, what they'll do is they'll take the, the take bug, it. pull it to the side, unclamp it, clean it up a little bit and then get it ready for the next weld. Yep, uh, tips and cups if they need to. If not, cut the wire, get ready for the next one. How easy is this to move when you oh, get it? Uh... Easy. Okay, it's so we got- It's pretty heavy though, I mean. This part right here- Squeeze it together. Is where you take it off. Oh, yep. that is kind of heavy. Back you on. Make sure them, them wheels are lined up. So yeah. They're not lined up. These front ones right here. Oh, I got them in the bottom one, so it's not gonna weld yeah. right. All right it, it'll weld, but as soon as it gets to a certain spot, it's probably gonna kick off and it might fall all the way off. Oh, there you go. Well, let's see one of these things in action. Our next little home for today's episode, the welding shack. We got the power over here. We got our generators. We got our inverters out here. And then we got the wire feeders inside. You can see all the cables, all the gas, all the hoses is everything. All the power is run through the top of the shack. These things are usually connected to a, a side boom. They'll drop on top of the shacks. That's why these floors open up, come inside. And this is where a welder's paradise happens. We got the bugs ready to go. Let's get suited up. This is a 36 inch 515 wall. It's a, a root, a hot, three fills, and a split cap. This particular pipe, this joint already's got, it already has a root in it. So what we're gonna wind up doing is run a single head for the hot pass. Then we'll run a dual fill, fill one and fill two. And then we'll run a single head for fill three. And then we'll run a dual head for caps one and cap two. All right, ready for the hot pass? Ready. Get down to the bottom of the pipe. One welder stops. Now we got our grounds on. Ground off on this side. Pick her up. All right, so we're gonna put the hot pass in over here. Single head, line your torque up. Perpendicular to the pipe. Here we go. The hot pass. Let's go to the next pass, one or two 
Hawk passes in. We're starting to two deep fills now. Once the second head catches up, it'll fire off. And now we're filling. All your wire speeds, it'll flash the position on the pipe, the circumference, all on the on the fender. That's your welding. Get that final fill of nice. Buff, you taught me back in the day the proper helper stance. You remember that? Yeah. Oh, what, what's the proper helper stance? I'll show you from top to bottom. Give it the old wide guy. You gotta kick that old leg out like that. All right, pitter patter, let's cap her. We got two weld heads going at one time, so instead of stacking them like this, we're gonna stagger them and get that two beat cap. Stacks them in there, side by side. And that's how a bug crawls, y'all. Could be worse, too. Could be 130 here instead of 105. <laughs> <laughs> that's the mainline shacks. You'll see these shacks kind of just leapfrogging each other. You got a hot pass shack, you've got those fill shacks, you got the final fill shack, and you got the cap shack. And we still got rig welders out there, but we also have the tie in shack. A little bit more portable, not making hundreds of welds in a day, we're just tying in the main lines. This one's all dual shield flux core, just a single head, and instead of going from top to bottom, we're going bottom to top. When it comes to tie-ins, you still need the rig welder out there. You do. So they come in and put a bead in? They'll put a cellulose bead, cellulose hot pass, depending on the procedure. They might do a hot fill on top of that, and then they'll flux core right on top of it. We're gonna put a fill in here. Maybe we might see if we could cap it. I think you guys get the gist of what these bugs are capable of as far as moving up the pipe. We are gonna just probably run this quarter out to get it flushed out and capped so you can see what it looks like. A lot slower, a lot more deposition. A little slower, a lot more meat. Here we go, Rob all. Oh, I love the sound of that dual shield. What are you fiddling with while you're watching? Uh, voltage and steering. This doesn't have a sink track, so you have to steer it. It'll track vertically, but it won't track horizontally. No, it'll be a split. <laughs> a bit of wind. That's what happens when you party naked, huh? That's right. That's why these tarps are all on it, because they'll drop down those tarps. If you get frosty, you just got a bad time. That's pretty much it, y'all. That's how the main line works. That's how these bug welders work. If you didn't already see, go back to the last video where we did everything about the PFM, the facing machine, the internal clamps. We got everything on the inside done. These bugs show everything on the outside. Thanks for your help, KD. No worries. Paul, thanks for your help. Jimmy, Danny, everybody at RMS, we really appreciate you letting us come out here and show a lot of the real world stuff out there. So if you like what you're seeing, please give us a like, follow, subscribe, comment down below. We'll see you guys on the next weld.